EV Revolution Show is supported in part by Budget Safe Solar. If you are considering solar in most any part of North America, give my friends a call. They will take the time to listen to your specific situation and help you reach a decision about what's available to you and what makes the most sense. If you would like to join the growing solar industry, they'd like to speak with you. Go to www.budgetsafesolar.com to contact them. All right, and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host for this, another car review episode on a very blustery, windy day that's going to be getting worse today. So I'm trying to uh, squeeze in some filming here. Thanks very much for watching the show. Appreciate it, and uh, I'm very excited to have this BMW i4 eDrive 40, a brand new, and I want to thank BMW Canada for that. So I'm going to try to get some of the over general overview and photography done as quick as I can because there's uh, some pending rain that's coming in soon and I will start off by saying that I had washed the car last night but then it rained of course on the way out to find a shooting location today so it got dirty again so it is what it is but trust me it's a beautiful looking car so thanks for tuning in let me get right into the review. Now, as I mentioned, this is brand new for BMW from an electrification standpoint, the i4. Of course, the 4 Series Coupe has been around for a little while, but this is the first year that BMW has rolled out an elect fully electrified version of that sedan. And as you can see by the exterior and the design of it, it is a BMW 4 Series Coupe or Coupe, depending on how you would want to pronounce that. BMW has fully electrified this by putting the battery pack in the floor and offering either one electric motor in the rear for rear-wheel drive or two for all-wheel drive dual motor configurations. Now, as you can see by the styling, it incorporates, uh, you know, basically it looks like a 4 Series Coupe and it doesn't really turn a lot of heads like some other EVs do, like the Ionic 5 as an example. However, there are some uh, uh, key styling cues. You know, you've got the striping here on the side. You've got some blue elements all around. That signifies anything with the eye uh, capability and the electrified versions, including the front and the rear. There's labeling. But that's about it. It's a very subtle look. And for um, owners out there and uh, car people that are looking for an EV that don't really want to stand out in the crowd, because some people don't, this is a great option, especially if you love BMW. Now from a size, because this is really compared a lot to the Tesla Model 3, obviously, it's about 188 inches long, and the Model 3 is just under 185, so it's slightly longer. They're both about the same width at 72 inches, 72 to 73 inches, and about the same height at 57 inches. So what makes this probably slightly different is a little bit more of a raking roof line here, as you can see, which means a little tighter to get in into that back seat, and I'll do some video on that coming up. But for BMW enthusiasts, they will obviously know exactly what this looks like and what it feels like. And, and how the size fits for them. One thing about BMW is that they do excel on is their lighting system. This has full LEDs around and it also incorporates BMW's laser light headlight system. I would say it's one of the best on the market today from a lighting system and this incorporates that. Now I almost forgot about the front grille, the kidney, whatever you want to call it. There's people out there, it's, it's, a, it's a whole forum on its own, people talking about this, which I think really find something better to do folks. I think the styling's fine. I love it. I have no problems with this. The key here is that it has some material in it that's what they call self-healing. So if you get some, you know, dings from stones or something like that, uh, over time in the heat, you can either take a hair dryer um, or let the sun and it will actually heal and take away some of those really small scratches that you can get. The key why this is so big is because the radar and there's a lot of sensor and technology packages back here as well. There is some opening here for the cooling, of course, at the bottom, um, but I think it's fine. A lot of people are making a big deal out of this. Find something else to talk about, folks. Now for the powertrain, this is utilizing BMW's fifth generation of their E-Drive having new motors that both have higher power densities in the motors and batteries with higher energy density. Now the energy, as I mentioned, does come from a battery pack, a lithium-ion pack, 
based on a 400 volt architecture and, and it ha has a full capacity size of 83.9 kilowatt hours. Now the i4 comes in two variants. It, this what I have here is the E-Drive 40 single motor version, rear wheel drive, and it does produce a pretty hefty amount of horsepower and torque for being just a single motor. BMW rates this at 335 horsepower and 317 pound-feet of torque. Gives that a 0 to 62 or 0 to 100 kilometers per hour uh, time lines in the 5.5 to 5.2 second range, depending on what website you look at. I'll tell you folks, though, and a lot of journalists that have uh, and comments that I've seen about this vehicle say the same thing. It feels a lot faster than 5.5 or 5.7 seconds. So that single motor may sound like a detriment to a lot of folks, but it actually has a lot of get up and go. Now, speaking of get up and go, if you really want that punch and you want to fly like the Starship Enterprise, you know, going at warp speed, then the i4 also comes in an M50 version, which is a dual motor all wheel drive producing 536 horsepower and 586 pound feet of torque. Uh, with boost mode, gets that going to 0 to 62, 0 to 100 kilometers per hour at 3.9 seconds, so under the four second mark, which is pretty fast, probably a little faster as well if you timed it right. Now, EPA ranges on this one, the E-Drive 40 single motor, are the highest at 482 kilometers or about 300 miles, right on that mark. And for the M50, obviously you lose some range because of all that power that you're going to pull from the batteries and the larger powered motors and such. So that range drops to an EPA rated, rated uh, offering of 400 kilometers or 249 miles. Now the suspension on the i4 is really nice. Uh, it's standard with rear air suspension on both trim, on both variant models. If you get the M50, you get adaptive um, uh, suspension on the front, and you can also get that with the M Sport package if you stay with the E-Drive 40. Now charging is pretty straightforward. It uses a CCS combo method, which is the standard now after Tesla, of course, which is their own proprietary. And BMW provides level one, level two charging speeds of 9.6 kilowatts up to 9.6 with the flexible charger. Or if you get the BMW wall box, you can push up to 11 kilowatts. For level three, it does support up to 205 kilowatts of DC fast charging, which BMW rates at a 10 to 80% charge in 31 minutes. So if you're going 20 to 80, it's gonna be less. Now the interior is all BMW, of course, and I'm gonna sit inside and talk about that in a couple of minutes, but I wanted to just uh, do the rear seat thing that I usually do, just to see how it is getting to the rear seat. It is gonna be a tight fit in here, but let me show you how that looks. So as you can see, it's a decent opening to get into this, but I have the seat set where I want it, but I'm gonna to have to duck here, and, yep, and slowly slide, slide my way in. So that didn't look very good at all, but I do these things live, folks, as you know. Once you're inside, you've got adequate um, knee room. I've got a fist and I've got a fist of, of headroom for height. Now, if you're taller than 5'6", five, 5'7", five, than I am, you are gonna find it very snug here in the back. Width wise, it's okay. I've got the middle thing down, so it's a little bit more narrow. If you lift the armrest up, you'll have a bit more width room. So certainly we'll sit four. Uh, doing five in a pinch will work. It won't be so comfortable. Because this is based on BMW's current 4 Series Coupe, you do have that transmission hump here in the rear. It's not a flat floor. And that's where BMW actually uses this to run electrical wires through. So kind of wish they didn't have it, but you know, they're using the same platform that's coming off the assembly line. They actually built on the same assembly line as the i4 gas uh, powered versions. So the middle person here is gonna be a bit uncomfortable having to find a position for their feet. But in, you know, in a pinch, it'll work. But normally I wouldn't recommend you know, going more than four. It's got all the, the fixing for the child seats and everything, so you should be able to get them in here nicely. Let's start with the display on the interior. Now this is an all new standard BMW curved display. It's got a 12.3 inch instrument cluster in front of me, as you can see. And then it has a 14.9 inch center information display or CID, lots of different things. Now I'm not gonna go through all the menus because there's lots of things to choose from here, 
but I do like the displays. They're really nice. You can change the views in these if you want um, to show different content, um, just directions or navigation if you want on there, maps, stuff like that, um, or just a straight, you know, clean speedometer type of range. I've had it here where I wanted to continue to see the range. There is also a heads up display. Uh, hopefully this is coming through. Uh, it'd be flickering because that's just the telephone or that's just the video uh, sync speed. So it shows flickering. It doesn't flick in, uh, flicker in real life, of course. That would drive you nuts. It's a really nice HUD. I'm not a big fan of them, but this one is just a little bit more subtle than the Ionic and the Kia, uh, Kia EV6 were. And um, I just tend to really like it. It actually works quite well. Uh, gives you all the information. Let me zoom in here. There we go. A little bit better. Um, gives you all the information and you can change the look of that as well if you want um, just go into the menu here and I'll go over and I can just have it with the directions or I can have it as a simplified um, speed and then it'll flash of course any warnings and then if I want to have something more like the nav um, in this one in this case is just a blank so a couple different options you can choose from um, I liked having the the directionals just to give the compass type of bearings there so I thought that that was nice but it's a nice clean display here a nice clean uh, infra uh, uh, dash and everything it's a it's typical BMW steering wheel a really nice feeling steering wheel I'll have to admit I've had a couple of people get in this just to sit and they said, wow, this steering wheel is excellent. It really does feel nice. It's grippy. It's not too thick, not too thin. It's a really nice steering wheel. Don't have to grip it hard, but it has that great uh, solid feel with, uh, of course, tactile buttons here. So it's got a nice mix of soft touch controls on the HVAC and buttons. Uh, you've got a couple of soft touch controls here for some common features uh, radio track and stuff like that your volume and then you, of course you can you can do a lot from the instrument panel even through the heads-up display you can change music stations it'll show you on the hud um, you can check uh, up and down volume so there's a lot you can do once you learn the system and what i've uh, seen a few reviews where journalists have commented that the there's too many menus on this thing like too many options that you can do as you can see here this is all the apps that are available there's a lot of apps here a good couple you know page and a half of apps now my response to that is you know most of these you're not going to use first of all and second of all once you set up some of this stuff you're not really going to go back into those apps a lot anyway um, and the good thing is that when you when you go to the home you have this card tiling effect and you can set up different uh, elements here add widgets basically or cards depending on how you want to call it to get what you want and what you want the look of the display lots of different options so you know I like having the nav up front I like having you know what radio station or whatever music I'm listening to of course 80s all the time rock and then I like to see you know kind of my current status here of what what's going on with the vehicle this is my trip type of odometer or since last charge is what I'm currently on right now and then you can change it so I really like that feature um, some of the journalists have been complaining about the menus. I think they're bonkers. I think there's nothing wrong with this. I'd rather have more than less, to be honest with you, and have the option to configure this any way I want. So there's lots of things that you can do, lots of settings. Some of the settings you have to dig a little bit for, but once again, there's set and forget settings for the most part. So once you do it, you can do that. You do have the BMW IDs. You can log in as different IDs, personalities, profiles, and it'll remember your seat position, your uh, radio station, uh, your look for the menu, all that kind of stuff. So it's really nice that it has those features as well. And this is a very nice display. You're going to see this on the uh, BMW iX and probably a lot of future models as well that BMW comes out with this display system. It's integrated very nicely, easy reach, and I found it no problem. Again, like any vehicle, you just got to learn it and then you will... Um, you will figure it out. I'm not going to spend much more time in the interior. You can see not a lot of storage up front here. A couple of small cup holders. You can fit a large coffee, but it's a little tight to kind of get in and out because you've got this lid here. Your wireless charger, that's an option, is here. You've got all your controls, which are pretty easy to figure out. The B mode, all that kind of stuff starts sport, comfort modes, driving modes. Again, the wheel is really nice to be able to go and change things as well. If you don't want to take your eyes, uh, don't want to play around with the screen, you can do it here. And once you learn where things are, it's going to be really easy to set and forget. I've tried the BMW Assistant. It works well, like for navigation. It picks up the voice quite nicely. Um, it's got a very small you know, center console storage here, but adequate with some charging ports. Again, it's a, it's a tighter kind of cockpit. Um, very comfortable, but it does give you that tighter and closed feeling here. But everything is very nicely appointed and finished here. Um, and then, of course, this model has the power moonroof that opens. So it is nice. 
So again, just to highlight the interior, you know, it's it's not too complicated. I think like others have stated, it's very quiet and I'm going to do the coming up with the driving part now. Um, it does have an acoustic uh, windshield glazing, uh, glazing on the windshield, I guess, to help with the sound. Um, you know, I'm not going to play the BMW Ionic or Iconic sound system, which is standard on the M50 and optional on this. That's the Hans Zimmer, legendary composer Hans Zimmer, where they've been able to um, get some some different sounds going. Somewhere in here, you just have to find it. I'm not a big fan. I like the quiet, but if some people want sound, it's there. So I haven't been using it. It really is a, a wonderful Harman Kardon uh, music system. Very lovely with the surround sound. I love it. I can't play it because YouTube will block the video. Everything is solid no squeaks no rattles it's just a nice comfortable system here i've got all my junk in the back so i've got the seats down but you know it's it's really really nice um one other feature that this thing has is something called bmw um, um what is it called drive recorder here so you can actually record uh different elements and it'll record like uh you know if, if there, uh, 30 seconds before if, if there's an accident it, it, I think it constantly records and it will save different material. So similar to Tesla's uh, dash cam element, which I think is cool. And you can activate that and do different things. You can also remotely log in and activate the cameras and see what's going on around the car like Tesla can do today with that. So it's really nice. Uh, the ambient light, lighting is nice in here. I think that kind of helps to undarken the space a little bit because it does feel a bit dark in here with the black interior and everything black. Um, you know, but I mean, that's BMW a quality and it all shines through. So one thing I like about the i4 is that it's a hatchback design, or you can even call it a fastback or liftback, depending on what part of the world you live in. So it looks like a sedan, but it has that practicality to that. Now, when you open the cargo area, you get about 470 liters or 16.6 .6 cubic feet of cargo volume with the rear seats in place. Fold those 20, uh, 40, 40, 20 or 40, 20, 40, depending on how you, you go left to right, split bench down, and those numbers increase to 1,290 liters or 45.6 cubic feet of cargo space. Now, there is a, an under storage component to this trunk a, a, as well, to the boot, which is nice, but if you opt for the, the, the optional Harman Kardon system with the subwoofer, then the subwoofer takes up most of that under a cargo area that's here. Uh, so you can put a few small things, you know, uh, in there, but not a whole lot. Now, there is no frunk in this uh, BMW. You can open the hood, and what you'll see is just that entire plastic shroud covering the motor and all the electronics uh, and the charger and the inverters and all that stuff that's up front. So there is no room, or BMW's chosen not to put a frunk here. Uh, they only offer the hood to be released and accessible so you can fill in your windshield washer fluid. Otherwise, you don't have to worry about anything. All right, so I'll give you my driving feel that I've been uh, experiencing on this BMW i4 for the last several days here. Um, so far, it's been really nice. You know, as I mentioned, this is a wonderful vehicle when it comes to the build quality and the fit and finish of this vehicle. It just really, really feels nice. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure what else I could say. It's got the quality, you know, yeah, it could be more open, it could be more lighter, that kind of stuff. But it does feel really, really nice in what it offers. Um, comfortable, I was able to find a comfortable seating position. It took me a little while. I like this a little higher, so as you folks know, I'm not used to the long front here. <laughs> it's a little longer than some of the cars I've been driving lately. So I had to get used to that, um, especially parking and just kind of navigating couple days I was able to get used to it you know even though it's the same length it just I think at the Tesla the nose drops more rakely or it gives that sensation whereas this tends to stand uh, you know go out a little bit more so I had to get used to that but otherwise you know I'll get up to speed here and hopefully you can hear me okay because I forgot my other cable so I have to use the, the phone mic natively uh, hopefully it's coming out okay <clears throat> But as you can see, getting up to speed, and you know, this is what BMW lives for, right? These kind of winding country roads. I mean, it'll boot down the Autobahn at 220, no problem at all. There's, there's, you know, they're built for that. But you know, in reality, in North America and most parts of the world, you don't have those unlimited speeds. So you need to just gauge for the driving experience that you do have. Hopefully, the noise level is is coming through. That it's not really that noisy. All I'm hearing more of the tires. 
than anything else, than wind noise. I'm not hearing any wind noise, anything like that. And it's a windy day. We've got some gusts, as you saw in here in my filming. <laughs> That's kind of interrupting what I'm trying to say sometimes. So this car handles well. It's very well planted. I've got it set for a comfort type of mode, even though Eco Pro, but the, the, the steering being comfortable. So I just want a nice, luxurious type of ride, if, but it still has that sport flair to it. So it's really nice. I find this uh, the steering wheel very uh, responsive and adequate. Uh, you get decent road feel out of it, so um, I think it's perfectly fine. You know, again, you have to put these vehicles into perspective, folks. You know, nine, probably 80 90% of your driving is m mundane, right? Driving to work, driving back, doing errands, that kind of stuff. So, you know, I wouldn't worry about, I wouldn't think so much about buying a car so you can go on the track once a year or something like that. I and mean, if you want to do that, great, but you've got to think of the overall daily use practicality. And sometimes these journalists get hung up on you know, uh, driving feel and this kind of stuff. And uh, the car turns adequately. It turns on a dime. I mean, it, it's really, really good. So I, I've got no problems with any of this. The brakes, as I mentioned, the stopping, any of this stuff, it just works wonderfully well. Uh, as I said, the, the HUD is not a big fan of HUDs, but this is just a little bit more um, subdued, even though it's a bigger element. When I think of the Hyundai, uh, the Ionic 5 DV6, it just looks that a little more elegant I guess is the word and it just kind of blends in a little nicely so it's not distracting from my driving which HUD sometimes can be because I'm not used to them uh, but overall you know it's a very solid experience again you're gonna you're gonna like to drive in this it drives like a BMW drives like a German uh, solidly built car and these again are built on the same assembly line as the internal combustion for series coupes um, not sure what else to give you on my driving impressions. You know, again, the range will be coming up at the end. So far, it's been really good. We've had some temperature sways, as I mentioned. Today being one of them where it's, it's dropping like a rock. But, you know, overall, it's just excellent. Um, just a really nice, fun car to drive. Uh, could it be a bit more roomy inside? Yeah. Uh, could it be, you know, other than that, I mean, that was probably be the only thing. I would like to have a little bit more storage for... Instead of having to try to cram a coffee cup, it'll hold, but you know, you gotta play with it a bit. And then I would rather have a little bit more open um, storage area here, not so condensed, but it does work. As I said, the door pockets are okay. They're not that big. Uh, I would like to have a bit more storage space, um, but otherwise it's very comfortable, beautiful materials, nice materials all the way around, you know, accents and soft touch and all this kind of stuff. So it's a very pleasant experience in the cabin. So this does the job adequately, really, really nice. It's got a great driving experience. And um, again, I, I'm not sure what else to say. Oh, one thing I did want to say, I want to forget, this has a really good auto wiping system, auto wipers. Um, a lot of vehicles, including Tesla, still have challenges when you engage the auto wipers. You know, they tend to sometimes streak and especially at night, the light glares on the streaks and it thinks more rain's coming, so it starts going crazy. Um, they're really hard systems because they're based on camera um, vision sensors, right? The, uh, picking up the water that hits the, um, the windshield. BMW's done an excellent job on controlling that. With the auto system, you can go up and down on the, the delay frequency on this, um, and that seems to help a lot um, to kind of gauge what type of weather condition you're at at that point in time, how much rain is coming down, and if you set it at the right one, it works, works extremely well. It's probably the best automatic wiper system that I've seen so far, um, better than Tesla's, and I keep, you know, uh, emailing suggestions and to Tesla every once in a while and I'll say you got to tune that automatic wipers because I, I shut them off a lot more than I use them to be honest with you it's a nice feature to have because sometimes especially you know when you don't have to dig through menus uh, but again you do have a, everything stock so you know as far as digging through menus there's stocks and there's controls for all the common features that you're going to need uh, for the wipers for the turn signals for the high beams if you need them if you don't have them on automatic all that kind of stuff your speed controls are here now I, i'm not going to show you um, adaptive cruise and lane keeping because this vehicle doesn't have that option package it has a lane keeping assist which is basically it'll bonk you uh, if you hit the lane and start giving you warnings and the cruise control is strictly the old style cruise control which i i, I know because i grew up with it where you set a speed and that's it and there's no adaptability in this particular trim that i have here i believe that that comes with a different or an optional driver package and i might have the lower driver package that came with this one i don't I, I didn't look through all the specs so i'm sure that they offer those features um i would have hoped though for this price point that that adaptive cruise and a really good lane keeping 
would have been part of that not without having to maybe spend a bit more I'm not sure you have to look at the options so that's probably you know one thing that's a little disappointing you know other than that it's again it's very comfortable very quiet car um, you know uh, at night again the headlights work great as I mentioned those laser systems are just fantastic probably one of the best on the market um, so I'm not sure what else to say and I almost forgot a couple of other things so um, this does have regenerative braking, different modes that you can set on this. I've been running B mode all the time, which is is the one pedal feel. Um, and so you can obviously feather the accelerator and it will take you to a stop. It will hold you. And then you could just use the accelerator for that one pedal driving. There are also uh, three other modes. A, let me find my notes here. I believe it's a high, medium and low, which you can set in the uh, center information display. Uh, uh, infotainment uh, structure here you can set that or you can put it in adaptive mode and it will adapt to your driving conditions and, and activate the regenerative braking automatically depending on the sensors and what it's seeing if the curves coming up this kind of stuff so if the if people again are worried in the winter about this being a single motor um, BMW does have um, does use something called a rear actuator slip uh, wheel slip limitation it's 10 times faster than conventional DCS systems um, so um, it is uh, it, it helps for traction control basically in the winter is what they're saying it's a very slick system so obviously I'm not in the winter at least not yet we could get some snow today who knows um, so I'll have to wait and see All right, so I hope you, hope you enjoyed the interior look and the driving look. Uh, let me get to some of the final thoughts here, but I wanted to talk about the BMW app because it's a really good app. I usually don't play with a lot of the apps that the OEMs provide for their vehicles because they're generally not that great. They're okay, they're fairly basic, but BMW has done a great job on their app. It actually syncs really fast, connects very fast with the vehicle. In fact, faster than the Tesla app. And I thought the Tesla app is pretty good. This has a very similar functionality to the Tesla app where you can find your location very precisely. You can activate HVAC controls and some other elements, things like that, check the status of the vehicle and so forth. It's very good, very accurate. And I think it's one of the best apps that I've seen be even you know, to at par with Tesla's app for their vehicles. And we have to talk about pricing before we wrap up. The i4 eDrive 40 base starts at an MSRP Canadian of just under $55,000 at $54,990. And the M50 base, if you want that dual motor version, starts at $72,990 Canadian. You can check your local listings for pricing in your regions. Now, as typical with BMW and a lot of the German brands, you can option this up you know where like you can do a lot of options on this folks and get lost in the pricing matrix that is SKUs and part numbers for BMW options so this actually has quite a lot of options on it and it comes in just under 72,000 at 71,890 as tested here before freight PDI and taxes and all that kind of stuff so it's not only an expensive vehicle unfortunately this does not qualify for the federal incentive program rebate that we have here in Canada a uh, 5,000 and may qualify for some of the provincial incentives that are out there in Canada you'd have to check locally and of course probably still qualifies for the US Fed tax credit of 7500 uh, unless they've changed that program by the time I've filmed this so there will be some incentives just have to check locally for that so what's my summary on the BMW i4 I've really enjoyed driving this around for a week um, and I have to say, folks, I mean, the first thing I always look at is the range when I drive all electrics. The range has been pretty good. I don't have my final numbers yet, but I'm going to put them up here in this section here. I'll show you the chart. It seems to be holding its own with normal loss of the cooler temperatures that we've had. We've had some up and down temperatures from 20 degrees to 4 degrees that it is today. And with the wind, it's feeling closer to 1 degree or 0 right now. Um, so it's been going up and down, but it seems to be holding its own. But as typical of BMW, this is a solidly built vehicle. As I mentioned, it feels heavy, it feels solid. Um, you know, it drives like it's built, almost like a tank. It's a very, very well-built, high quality, of course, BMW quality there for that. You know, but even with that weight and the heaviness feel to it, it's very comfortable to drive. The suspension works well. Um, it's probably not even as soft as some of the others, like maybe the Ionic 5 that I just had, because that's more recent in my memory. Um, but it's, you know, better than a lot of other things that are out there. 
So it's not too soft and you can throw this vehicle around in corners if you want to. I mean, after all, BMW wants their drivers to drive their vehicles. Now, because this uses the existing 4 Series chassis, this is not a ground-up design EV platform. So, as I mentioned, you have that rear floor transmission tunnel hump, whatever you want to call it, um, which, again, can be uncomfortable for that fifth passenger. I think most people aren't going to take five passengers in this for long trips, but that's what it is. However, in saying that, the integration of the electrical system, the electrified version of this, is excellent. You don't even... You don't know, really, unless you kind of played around with it, that it's an electrified version. You know, you can turn on those Hans Zimmer sounds that I mentioned and get different noises if you want to kind of simulate maybe a motor or some spaceship or some noise if you're used to that. If that's what you want, you can do that. Um, but you don't need to. This is a very capable vehicle, even with the single motor variant, which quite surprised me. You know, if I were looking at this, even with the Canadian Winters, I would probably stick with the single motor and not pay all that money for the more power that the M50 gives you uh, just because of the extra motors. I would probably stick with the rear motor. I think it would handle very nicely in the winter times with a good set of tires on it. So I think it would be fine. And it's quiet, as I mentioned. Didn't hear any motor sound. Uh, took away the, the, the wind noise quite adequately. In fact, all I heard more was probably the tires, just the type of tires that they're running on these here. That's probably what created more, uh, more noise than anything else. It, as I mentioned, it's got good range. It's got a decent charging curve. Start, you know, it can peak at 205, um, but it's an adequate charging curve. And again, that 10 to 80 in 30 minutes or 20 to 80 in probably 20 minutes or 25 minutes is more than adequate that, to get you going. Now, the competitors for this, of course, in the all-electric four-door sedan space, there's not that many. Of course, the Tesla Model 3 leading in that space. Polestar 2, of course, another good competitor. And then this one, because if you look at the EV6, Ionic 5, the Genesis GV60, they're all CUV SUVs, and there's a whole slew of others. So there's not a lot in this four-door sedan segment here in North America specifically. There are some other elements in Europe, of course, on other makes and models. So it's a pretty good field of competition when you look at those vehicles. Uh, but again, you're going to judge them for different reasons. If you want the minimalistic, you can look at Tesla or Polestar. If you want traditional BMW look and feel, then you're going to get it with the i4. All right, so in closing, do I recommend this? Hey, you bet I recommend this. This is a sweet vehicle. I do love BMW. I do love the build quality, and I do love what BMW has done with this vehicle in the electrification. You know, there is an advantage, as, as I always talk about, and you hear others talk about, about that, you know, building an EV up from its ground up design platform. You get more space and flat floors and all this kind of stuff. But in the circumstances, what BMW is trying to do to accelerate their electrification, full electrified offerings, they've taken a really nice marquee model lineup and, and trim package in the i4 or the 4 series and electrified it. So I congratulate them for doing that. If you're interested in this vehicle, if you love BMWs, you will not be disappointed. So that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution show. Thank you very much for watching. Again, I want to thank BMW Canada for the loaning of this vehicle. If you haven't subscribed on YouTube, please do. I'd appreciate it. Click that bell, turn on notifications and all that stuff so you can know when something's coming up. If you're a Patreon supporter, always my humble thanks for that. You know who you are. Names are on the end of each and every episode that I do. I never forget you folks. And I continue to stay safe. Watch the EV landscape. Lots of stuff going on, of course. I've got another couple of car reviews still coming up for this month. So this is a busy month for me trying to cram all this stuff in. So again, thank you for taking the time out of your busy days to spend with me on this car review. And until the next show, I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.